Hello and good afternoon and welcome to this fourth video in a series of videos that we're focusing on uh, with Linux containers and specifically networking uh, with Linux containers and how you do the virtualization with the network component uh, with your Linux container. So this video is going to basically be sort of a part two to uh, video 003A where we took a look at creating uh, a custom bridge interface which we then brought up on the VMware Ubuntu host and then we created a Linux container that we didn't let attach to the uh, the default which is the LXCBR the Linux container bridge zero interface we went ahead and let it connect to uh, we customized the config file for the container and had it um, use the bridge zero interface that we created and the reason behind that the use case we were looking at is you know I want to create some Linux containers but I want them to be available on my home network right I want them to show up on my local area network uh, just like they would if they were an autonomous host and so then we can go from hosts on the 192.168.1 LAN segment, we could SSH directly into those Linux containers and access them. And uh, the other use case would be, you know what, I'm going to set up a, uh, an Apache web server on my container, and I'm just going to do some port forwarding on my, you know, my Linksys, my Belkin, whatever, my router, and port forward 80 and 443 over to that container. And to do that, we would need to make it available on the local area network segment. And so that's what we did. Now this is sort of a, a going to be a much shorter video where you can see here to the left where we initially set the bridge interface up, we set it up to use DHCP. And so now we're going to take a look at setting the bridge up with a static uh, IP address. And there's a specific reason for this. When we looked at our connectivity, uh, the IP of the Linux container is 192.168.1.5. So if I'm on the host here, uh, this is actually a, a host on the local area network segment. It's an iMac. So if I were to say ping 192.168.1. Excuse me. Dot 65. You can see that I can ping that host because again, it's available on my local area network segment. Can I SSH to it? Absolutely. Right. So and this was really the premise behind this use case is hey, I want it. I want my Linux container to behave and to appear as if it's an autonomous host on my local area network segment. That way, uh, the other hosts on that segment can access it. And so we were able to do that there from a host on the network segment. But now let's go ahead and connect in here. Uh, let's say we'll say LXC console. Uh, dash in ubu dash veth dash zero zero one. So we're going to console into let's see console dash in. Did I not? I must be missing something. Oh veh. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I got that right. Veh dash zero zero one, and it's running. Um, Oh, I missed. I typed console wrong. Sorry about that. I was convinced I had typed it right there, and then I'm missing the O. So that command should actually be that command. All right. So we'll put in Ubuntu, Ubuntu, which is the default username and password. So let me go back to the PowerPoint slide that we had here, which showed the default uh, virtual Ethernet adapter setup and how these uh, Linux containers are attached to this link to the LXCBR0 bridge. And so what we've done is we've created another mutually exclusive bridge called BR0, and we're using uh, DHCP. Let me pull those back real quick. We're using DHCP. Uh, to get the interface assigned and this interface is bridging directly to the ETH0 interface on the host and then below that we have our bridge 0 Linux container right which is the other half of that pair for the interfaces and that's how we're trying to connect through so now I'm connected to one of the Linux containers 
that is over on LXCBR0. Now, I'm going to try to ping 192.168.1.65. And that is definitely not an IPv4 address there. So 192.168.1.65. And you can see that from a container that's over on a different bridge, right, we're unable to connect through. And this is uh, directly tied to the fact that the bridge interface we set up, this BR0, we set it up to use DHCP, so it's using the exact same IP address as the hosts, the VMware hosts ETH0 interface. So if I can't ping it from one of the virtual machines on that same segment, I certainly uh, won't be able to SSH to it. So let's check it out, 192.168.1.65. Right, so destination unreachable, if I were to run that with the dash V, um, oops, sorry about that. And did I get that? Dash V, I was hoping for verbose output there. Uh, but again, let me take a quick look at the, I thought it was dash V. Uh, ah, don't have the man page there. All right, so no man page for SSH, but again, uh, when I try to SSH uh, as the user Ubuntu, it comes back, it says no route to host. Now remember, again, the key here, and we're gonna see this because we're gonna change it and make it static, is when, and I'm on host 01, so the connection comes out here through the virtual ethernet bridge interface. It gets natted and it hits this interface here which is sharing the same IP address as the bridge zero interface. So this is dot, I think it's 119, and this is also dot 119. And so that communication there is not going to work. They're sharing, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they're sharing that same IP address. So let's go ahead and make the change here. We're gonna take a look at another use case uh, with the virtual Ethernet adapter type for Linux containers, and that is going to be to assign the bridge a static IP address, and we'll see that the results are going to be a little bit different when we give it the bridge interface, when we give it its own unique 192.168.1 address on that bridge zero interface so that it's on the LAN segment. So let's take a look here, LXC dash LS, oops, dash dash fancy. Okay, you can see that we've got our container running with the BridgeO interface. So let's go ahead and shut that guy down. So we'll say LXC-stop. The name of the container is Ubu BR0 Virtual Ethernet Adapter 001. So we'll bring him to a stop. And if I cap the Etsy network interfaces file out, you can see we've got our DHCP settings uh, turned on for the bridge interface here. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just simply going to use the IF down command and I'm going to take the bridge interface down. And you can see it's going to release, it's going to send that DHCP release of the bridge zero interface over to uh, the DHCP server, which in this case is a firewall, ASA firewall. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so now let's go ahead. We've got the bridge interfaces down. We've got the Linux container down that's leveraging that bridge interface. Let's go ahead and manipulate the Etsy network interfaces file. And let's change this from DHCP to static. And so to make the changes, all we need to do is put the address in here, 192.168.1, and we'll make it, uh, we'll say 87, I don't think is being used. And then we'll add in the net mask, which is 255, 255, 255, 0. And then our gateway is 192.168.1.254. It's that same ASA firewall. All right, so we'll save that off. And then we simply do IF up. Because remember, IF up and IF down, if I look at the man page real quick, you can see that it's looking, and it says right here, right? So the IF up and IF down commands may be used to configure or respectively deconfigure network interfaces based on interface definitions in the Etsy network interfaces file, right? So that's why I'm able to say IF up BR0, right? You can see the connection shows it's coming up. 
So if I were to say um, IP address show, and you can use the IP address command or the uh, the if config command. I, I prefer if config. Um, and where are we at here? ETH interface. Did I scroll by it? There we go, sorry, 56. So here it is. So this lists out uh, the bridge interface. You can see that we're now no longer using the same address that's been assigned to the ETH0 interface. We've got a, a unique 192.168.1 address on the bridge interface. So let's go ahead and clear. If I were to say um, if config, we could see the same thing a little cleaner. And there is the bridge interface, right? Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to fire back up. We're going to fire back up the bridge virtual Ethernet uh, adapter here, or the, the Linux container that's going to leverage that bridge. So we're going to say lxc start dash in ubu br0 veth dash 001. And it started rather quickly, so let's go ahead and check. And there it is. So let me go ahead and we'll console over to it. So well, actually, we don't need to console over to it. Let me console over to, we'll go to um, ubu-veth-001, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. And the reason I'm going to do this is we're going to look at the, the difference in connectivity. So let's pull the secure CRT back up. And so we're back on this iMac here. And this is a 192.168.1 address. So can I ping 168.1.65? Whoops. So I still have ping reachability, right? And, and remember, I'm coming from an independent autonomous host, which is, just happens to be on the same LAN. Can I SSH to 192.168.1.65? Absolutely. Right? So from the LAN segment, whether it's DHCP or whether it's static for the bridge interface, from hosts on the LAN, I can connect via, I have network reachability via ping, and I also have uh, network connectivity. I can SSH into uh, that Linux container, and you can see that I'm on the container right now. So we look take a look at the container's interface, and so here are those uh, settings that we had set earlier in the inter uh, the um, Linux container config file down in var lib lxc under the name of the container. And so here's the big difference though. So over here, I'm on the Linux container that's leveraging the private vir uh, virtual ethernet bridge interface lxcbr0, right? So on that virtual or on that uh, Linux container, can I now ping 192.168.1.65? So as you can see, it's a little different, whereas before we couldn't ping, now I can. And in fact, can I go from a Linux container using the Linux container bridge interface, right, that's going to come through and be natted, can I get over to the Linux container using the bridged virtual Ethernet interface setup. Absolutely. And so that's the difference, right? So you can see I'm back onto the Linux container that is the leveraging that bridge zero interface, right? And so when we use the bridge interface with DHCP by default without any other um, configuration work, you're unable to go from one Linux container on the LXC BR0 bridge over to another Linux container on a completely different bridge on that mutually exclusive BR0 bridge that we created trying to satisfy the requirement of I want my Linux containers to show up on my network segment as autonomous systems with a 192.168.1 address. And so that's the significant difference there. So I wanted to make sure that we covered that because there are some differences, some subtleties there between uh, having the bridge interface use DHCP or having the bridge interface uh, be set up with a static IP that is different 
from the host's ETH0 IP address. Okay, so that is gonna basically wrap this up. Again, I just wanted to cover sort of that, that small difference between the two, right? And again, we still have connectivity. Um, I can ping out to google.com, right? So I've still got my connectivity out to the internet. Um, and so not much has changed with the exception that the Linux containers on the LXC BR0 bridge can now communicate and connect to Linux, Linux containers on the BR0 bridge. And that minor change that we made was in the, and let me go ahead and exit off of here, and control AQ is in that Etsy network interfaces file where before we just said DHCP and we didn't have any of the addressing information. Now on our bridge interface, we've placed hard-coded IP information here, right? Address, netmask, and gateway. And so the bridge has a unique IPv4 address on the LAN segment as opposed to sharing uh, the IP address of the host, which would be the, the VMware Ubuntu host ETH0 interface. And so that has a minor uh, impact on container to container connectivity across the virtual Ethernet bridge, uh, across the bridge interfaces that exist. All right, so now we're going to move on to uh, keeping with the Linux container bridge zero interface and how we would manipulate IP tables uh, in order to provide connectivity from the LAN through to some of these Linux containers that we have that are getting their uh, IP addressing information from that DHCP scope that we configured uh, way back in video two. All right, thanks for watching and enjoy your weekend.